My cousin Skeeter really shifted my culture. <laughs> just going to say. It shifted mine too. And, yeah, that, I love the fact, I was thinking about, again, these parallels that you two have. You both are child actors. You've known each other for a really long time. I had crushes on both of them at one time. And they both worked with Wait, Rob Wait, don't do that. I totally had a crush on her. You did? Oh my God. Yes. Really? Yeah, she's I beautiful. I didn't know that. I mean, I didn't like talk about it a lot. But... <laughs> We are sitting next to someone who has been in this industry 30 plus years. 30 plus years from Harlem. Ah! Love that show. Shazam! (laughs) Superhero, spandex ready, but also divorce in the black. Most recently. Most recently. But the reason I love her is because she is the OG of the most glassy skin Mm. ever. She started the trend. Back in 1997. It's Megan Good! (laughs) Megan, you are the OG of glass skin. Thank you. You know this. Thank you. I didn't know that. (laughs) I'll take it though. I'm crowning her today. Oh, I'm crowning you. We can go back in. We got receipts of just face flawless, skin flawless since the moment I met you when I was, what, seven years old? Yeah. She was seven. It was hanging with Mr. Cooper. My cousin, Robbie Countryman. Was he he first dating? Robbie Countryman is your cousin? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's first AD. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So he was first AD. And when I came down, I would come and visit him. And yeah. And then that's when we met. Actually, let's go back even before Hang With Mr. Cooper. Mm-hmm. Because Megan was on Friday. Yes. Was, yeah. You guys, let's just. Yeah. I know we have to go old school for some seconds. But like, <laughs> yeah. You Take are us back, babe. iconic Thank you. within the industry that we are of child stars Thank into you. adult world. You have done such amazing things. And let me tell you what I like about it. You do it under. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm just doing it Don't try and say that. no because she's going to tell you what it is. <laughs> All right. Things that you do are culture shifting at every point in time. Mm-hmm. And like, kudos to you. Do you? <laughs> I appreciate that. Like, do you consider then, yourself a risk taker? Yes. You want to take a risk right now and put your hand in this teapot and sure. tell us what we're talking about? All right. I was actually scared for a second there, but I was like, I can't go back now. Go back. I'm a Leo. I have to be aggressive. <gasps> I'm a Leo too. I know. I, I, August 8th. Okay. <laughs> Fair. Okay. Fair. What are we talking about? Um, 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 um. Self care. Oh, self-care. Amen. There's so many different kinds of self-care. Amen. There's emotional self-care. There's physical self-care. There's skincare self-care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tell us about your self-care. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to incorporate all three. Yeah, for me, it's just, you know, taking time for myself. And I do a lot of praying, a lot of listening to things that are inspirational that lift me up. I, I just started journaling in the past two years, like really journaling. I used to journal mm-hmm. with like, what if someone reads this? Now I journal with I really don't care if you do and then you know working out consistently I work out like five days a week just because you know that I just turned 43 and I'm like all right it's about time to be serious about this and also I want to have kids so I just Mm -hmm. want to be in the best health that I can be in and make sure that when I do have kids you know if I am 63 with an 18 year old or 20 year old that I have the stamina and energy to run around with them and do things I sleep I don't, I don't make any qualms about the sleep that I need to get when I need to mm-hmm. get it. And I also just like shut down and say, no, I'm just going to stay in the house. I'm just going to watch my little show. I'm just going to do my little thing. If you look back over your self life, can you see how your relationship to your self-care and mm-hmm. what equaled self-care has changed? Well, if we're going to talk about skin, I used to, if there was like a boy I liked and like he slept over, I would definitely wake up with like a lash right here and like a, <laughs> a black circle of makeup or something. So I slept in my makeup quite quite a bit uh, in my 20s. And once I realized that's so horrible for your skin, then I stopped doing that. And then, you know, I used to, for some reason, wear a lot of makeup in my early 20s. And mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, I would take, you know, I think, yeah, I think there's two, at least two times where you might have walked out where you were like... <laughs> This bitch is taking way too long on it's that very fucking true. eyebrows. There's no way in hell. Um, I'm like, the you're the so inconsideration. Pretty. What are you doing? <laughs> um, Be- but yeah. Only because, Megan, I know, like, honestly, you're so pretty. Thank you. And I know you have some makeup on now, but you don't yeah. have as much as you used to wear, and you no. don't need it. But I know at certain age brackets, we think, do yeah, we want think it? we do. Yeah. And, and, and do. that's the thing now where it's like, I don't even put makeup on my face like that. Like, I put concealer, mm-hmm. contour. 
and a little bit of something in my brows and mm-hmm. I might like hit my cheeks, mm-hmm. but there, I will never put face makeup on my entire face ever. I will never put any type of coverage. And then anytime, you know, when you're on a stint of a show yep. and they do it every single day, it's not like you're doing it once in a while for a carpet or for lunch or for dinner. Every it's day. like you're doing it every day and your skin as you get older, it just starts to go, no, bitch. So even so, when you're working, you'll say no foundation? Yeah. yeah. The, at wow. the most, I'll do tinted moisturizer. It's another form of self-care. You're setting a boundary. Yeah. You're saying you're not going to put this makeup on me. Mm-hmm. This is all I want. And that's an important element, I think, of self-care too. Speaking Having of boundaries. Adv- yeah, yeah, exactly. Which so. was really a process for me because as a child actor, I was just told like, do what you're told. Wear what they tell you to wear. Do, you know, they want to put your hair like that and you don't like it. Just, you know, just don't be a problem. Make it easy. Don't, you know. And then people would always say, oh my God, you're so sweet. You're so nice. Stay like that, honey. And then I go, right. Mm-hmm. All that happens and then you start getting in your 20s and you have preferences and you kind of like, excuse me, could we da 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 da. Well, I mean, you know, da 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 and da da da. And then I'm like, okay, well. And then my mind, I'm like, I'm just going to go to my trailer and change it anyways. And then I would, and then people were like, did you change your makeup? And I'm like, well, and then it got to a certain point where I would get nervous that people were going to walk in the room and mm. while I was doing my makeup, like oh, I was God. a child and I'm like 27. Yeah. Or, or feeling. yeah, or just feeling like I'm going to get in trouble or something. And then, you know, talking with DPs on set, they're like, well, can you put some powder on your nose? And I'm like, if I do that, then it's going to flatten my face. And my face is not flat. My face has 3D to it. And they're like, but if you, I'm like, no, it's natural and it's dewy. And at the end of the day, I'm the only person who has to live with what I look like on camera for the yeah. rest of my life. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I've been doing this long enough that I do know what I want to look like respectfully. You know? And the originator of glass skin on camera. This is what <clears throat> yeah. I'm saying. This is, she but was also, dewy, also though, Gorgeous. I feel like that's so important that you found your voice and learned how to fully advocate for yourself because people do have this fear of like disrupting or disappointing or having to walk on eggshells and it's it's such a crucial part of self-care to be able to say respectfully no that doesn't work for me or this is how I feel most comfortable this is how I need this to run and you and I talk about that a lot because I think Raven was very similar to you in terms of still or still is in a lot of ways and that is something I think that maybe I've helped you with, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but helped you with... But you're going to with, with my wife. Well, you can correct me or you mm, can interject. Can Let's see. Oh my God. <laughs> where, uh, you're kind of allowed to. Just saying. <laughs> where I've been able to say like, no is a complete sentence. Like yeah. end of story. Like yes. you don't have to do Ooh, that's something. a statement. No mm-hmm. is a complete sentence. Yeah. And sentence. like you don't owe anyone anything else if it's something that doesn't make you comfortable yeah. or you don't want to do it or you're not but what about it? production and the amount of money they're spending and i want people to like me and it's like no doesn't matter no yeah. especially when it comes to something specific like your look like if the character has a specific look okay fine let's talk about it but if it's more you know meaning like yeah. she has like a cut on her face okay yeah. and you're like i don't want blood no shut up you have to have blood I had a bullet in my head, and I, had to, and I didn't want that. You but knew I that was it. coming. I could feel your energy. Make I know what she's it. about to say. Make it. Let me tell you something about my wife. Let me say something right now. So Sorry. I love her so much. My wife is very, very particular, very particular about how she looks. Okay, when she's Miranda everything has to be a certain way. She got a job on a show, and I'm a part of the show. And I was yeah. like, okay, listen, I who was that? I prepped Robert Richard. I pre- <laughs> yeah, he was in there. Yeah. I prepped the makeup team. Yeah. I was like, "Listen, my wife is coming. She's very particular about what she likes. Yeah. Let her do this. Let her do that." I'm, I'm like, "Okay, everybody, that. she's coming. She's coming. <laughs> Put your eyes to the ground." Anyway. Oh my god, I'm not Sean Penn. <laughs> Don't look at her. No. So anyway, she gets up there. I'm like, and I go check after. I'm like, "How was it?" They were like, "She was great. She let us do anything." I said, "Huh." Well, yeah, she let us do anything we wanted. We could do anything. I said, who said it? Who, how you get that done? And they said, right. well, she was, it was for the character. Listen, <laughs> you're going to relate to this, okay? Because if you have to go out as Megan or yeah. I have to go out as Miranda and I, it's just like a Friday and you're going to an, an event, let's say. Yeah. You're just yourself. Like, you're not going to want to wear an outfit that doesn't feel good. You're not going to wear shoes yeah. that like are not giving you the height that you want. Yeah. If you're playing a character who works at a grocery store yeah. and she wears sneakers that you think make your legs look stocky, you're going to put them the fuck on because like <laughs> that's what the character wears. I think there was something liberating to right. me about that mm. experience, but I also understand that like when you maybe are playing a character that's more aligned with your mm-hmm. look or has a certain aesthetic that you can also see yourself leaning into, you're going to want to feel good because looking yeah. back at it, it would be like, Mm. You know, looking at that, do you consider yourself a sex symbol? Uh, 
<laughs> have you ever been asked that before? Yeah, oh. yeah. Uh, I well, I mean, I think in my twenties and in thirties, maybe, and maybe in some ways in my forties. And I don't think it's really about age. I think it's about how we present mm-hmm. to the world. And sometimes I feel like a sex symbol. Sometimes I feel like a complete nerd. I, I think I'm a lot of different things at once. And so, it, in some ways, yes. I think in my twenties, I really wanted that because. Mainly, um, I really looked up to Holly Berry growing up, and mm-hmm. I wanted so much to be a lot like her. Um, shout out to another Leo. Oh, oh. Um, just surrounded but, by lions. And listen, another sex symbol, because we're clearly all the sex symbols. Lost on. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you consider yourself a sex symbol, babe? No, not at all. And I think not even close, not even for two seconds. But I think it's interesting because, like Raven was saying earlier, and anyone who looks at you knows, like you're very beautiful. And people talk about pretty privilege and people's experiences as Mm -hmm. being beautiful. Like you are treated differently. differently. And there is, and I also find you to be like very grounded and very humble and very down to earth. So I feel comfortable even bringing this up but I wonder just why are you doing that I know I you're showing your arms today you out here in front of two people you used to have a crush on I'm just checking to make sure you're good I'm just it's checking really to make sure hot. you are you hot it's really hot I don't know man I don't know Wes is gonna hate us for this the editor is gonna be like I fucking hate you guys this is so hard to track but I think the point that I was trying to get to mm-hmm. with this one I can't look at my peripheral because you're fucking me up um <laughs> Literally, the question to me is like, what is your experience being as pretty as you are in this I was world? going to say, do you think it hindered you from taking roles you that you wanted to? It? Or did you want to, or do you think you're right? Both. Where you're, both. both. I, I can't tell you how many times I've walked into something and I had an audition. They were like, she was great. But we just, we don't realistically believe her as this character because mm-hmm. she's, you know, a pretty girl. And we just don't feel like, and I'm like, how can you determine what that character is? should look like or what or even what I will look like when I you know what I'm saying yeah. or we've already hired the lead guy we don't buy that he could get her or like, I'm like how I'm like that's doing the character a disservice because that means you're saying that she's just only about the look mm-hmm. I've always known that like I want to be an actress and I want to have incredible opportunities I want to make things that are just good for my quality of life that hopefully inspire people and make people feel good but I know more than that I want to be a good person I want to use that platform to put good things into the world I want to be an advocate for women I want to help younger women mm-hmm. so not have to work as hard as we did you know the same that those that came before us have mm-hmm. I know that what I want to put in the world has never been about being famous and also I don't mm-hmm have a desire to be famous Mm -hmm. i don't mind getting through the airport quicker i will say that um just saying or i don't raven is also uh, (laughs) cut cut the cut the line at the club honey yeah i don't mind the perks but but just as many perks come with it come you know the other things as well or the uh, abuses or whatever it may Mm -hmm. be but you know no complaining it's just i feel like it's all about what you want to put into the world because i think that we're all here to help each other at the end of the day so about self-care and bringing it kind of back to that There are some actors and actresses in this world who take roles that are very heavy Mm -hmm. and change their whole entire body. Some Mm -hmm. people never come out of it. Some people do. I just heard Austin Butler. It took him a year to stop talking like Elvis. He hasn't Mm. stopped. He's he's still there. Yeah. Yeah, I feel bad for him. He did do incredible. It was fantastic. It might might be worth it to him. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be a superhero. I want to do artistic activism. I want to do Lucille Ball comedy. Will I throw myself over something, potential hurt myself to make it funny and get it done? Absolutely. 100%. My goal is just to use my platform for something bigger than myself, do things that feed my heart and my spirit and hopefully give something good to other people. We also come from a generation where, you know, some folks get to come in and say, I, I want to craft my career this way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they came from having different jobs and they went to school or wherever, you know, whatever their experience is, but they get to get here and make some decisions about how, what they want to do. Yeah. We come from a generation where we've been working. You don't working get to do that. When someone comes in behind you that's maybe four years younger than you, has been here for maybe three years or something, and they're like, I want this. And they get get that and even if you're on the same film and people know your name people do not know their name <laughs> she, I, I just have to say everything that you said and it's okay no it's not okay no, Megan everything you be. said you Otherwise, said so eloquently but this one I feel like the moment no. when you knew I was going to talk about my bullet <laughs> hole I can feel her because no. this is it's yeah. unacceptable. I, there's nothing to say other than period I'm jealous of those who get mm. to do that I'm mm. just flat out jealous period 
and it's great for them. I'm really happy they're getting another experience. And that's what, you know, moving forward means. And that's what, you know, that's what happens in history. Each year gets a little bit easier, but I just go back to the days when everyone thought I was pregnant with Omarion's baby because I was overweight because I just broke up with Kay Young and eating a whole bunch and overweight and can't, it no one gave a fuck. So and like when all those things happened and people coming on set now, it's like, I don't want to do that. What you don't want to do? And I would say that and I would get belittled or bullied into doing it because mm. not a lot of black women have these opportunities. How dare you do right. this? How mm. dare you do that? What you were also encountering is people had an expectation and an ideal already of who Raven Simone was. And Raven Simone was a very docile, fall in line, doesn't make, make noise, voice, yeah. doesn't mm -hmm. s disrupt anything type of person whereas somebody who maybe came in not as a child where there wasn't already expectation of what this person was and how they were going to be mm -hmm. but maybe someone who started acting at the age of let's say 17 18 could set a different trajectory for themselves they're older already they had more well, of a babes, voice i'm gonna stop so... you right there even the kids that come in at 13 they're still telling their parents what to do compared to mm -hmm. how we yeah were. sorry one more thing because no, you got me on my topic one more thing <laughs> you got me on my topic <laughs> the other thing is as i grew up making decisions for myself and disrupting mm -hmm. the order gave me panic attacks yeah to yeah. where okay maybe i shouldn't say this hey is this pot right and people yeah. like, just say it and i'm like um and then i would fluster and they're like that's a good idea i'm like huh that is also indicative of how you were raised and why you became an avoidant attachment person that's because fair. people who are avoidant <sighs> don't ever have space made for them to know i was raised by a narcissist yeah they but they're never given the space to know that their feelings are okay and that again yeah. my feelings also, were not okay no i know but that's also why as an adult and bringing it back to self-care i have had the conversation with you so many times where i've just said you have to say how you feel okay this person is asking this of you but you're uncomfortable you're already at 110 like you it's okay to say no it's yeah. okay to say i can't and that is taking care of yourself in a really honest, yeah. admirable way where you can then have peace in yourself. She's watched me have conversations on the phone to where I'm like saying yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Trying to make things easy. I leave the phone and I'm bawling. And she's yeah. like, call them back and say no. I'm like, I don't think I can. Thank God you have a partner to like walk you through it and be like, okay, this is the moment is happening. Mm -hmm. I know you know already, but you're doing it because yeah. of your programming. Let me help you get there mm -hmm. it'll be okay and then afterwards take that breath we may cry together or whatever it is but you know that you're gonna be okay you mm -hmm. know and that's really hard to do because a lot of people don't have the right person in their life to walk them through to support them mm -hmm. to remind them mm -hmm. even if they're you know the person who you don't think needs that everybody needs that to everybody some needs it. everybody and what you're expressing i understand that so much and i can't imagine well my therapist can <laughs> it's great it's really fun <laughs> okay question for everybody oh i love a question what yes. is the one thing that each of us are going to do today to give ourselves a little extra self-care hmm. hmm. i've already had a glass of champagne <laughs> <laughs> it's two o'clock we're it's, it's three i think <laughs> maybe i'm going to like curl up on the couch and just like shut everything down and probably like watch a good documentary about murder. Because <laughs> yes. that is relaxing for me. Oddly. That is perfect um, self care. I love that. Yeah. What are you gonna do, honey? I am going to kind of do what you're gonna do. I'm gonna <laughs> curl up on the couch once the mm -hmm. day is done and just like chill. Chill. Love that. Be by the AC. Calm down. Amen. Yeah, shut them up. Stop shut sweating. Them off. What are you going to do, babe? <laughs> I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to do my cuticles. <laughs> That's going to make moisturize me, your I'm going to moisturize my cuticles. That's like been making me real happy lately. And I need to find food. I'm hungry. All I oh, had yeah. was a blood sausage this morning. Oh. Let's toast. 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 Cheers, guys. Hello, booty. Eyes. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, today we are toasting to this very bizarre phenomenon that's kind of happening and it's showing oh, up I on TikTok. Keep going. That is not a bizarre phenomenon. I mean, actually <laughs> it kind of is because that's never happened before. <laughs> but there's something called fridge scaping happening. There's a woman what who's kind I of the pioneer. Getting into the refrigerator right now though. Familiar. I was like, I think Because we're that fit. hot. Because we're that, <laughs> Megan, she's like, I am small. Um, small but mighty. In this 
one, the butter has its own little awning I'm done. surrounded by flowers. I don't like this it. Like it's it's stressing me out. <laughs> it is, right? Because where are you supposed to put the food? I'm going to show you guys. A part of it is like really sweet and cute. Another part of it's like, oh, I feel food. like there's steak that's going to go bad because there's yeah. no place for it to look cute in there. And let's keep it real. The refrigerators now, unless you are an extreme millionaire, they are small on the inside. I, mean, I, I will say Denzel and Pauletta's refrigerator is it, huge. We've only been there together. Been, that's right. Exactly. That, huge. that refrigerator okay. growing up, we'd be like, all three of us could fit in it. Understood. <laughs> yeah. But, yes. So you guys. And ours will go. Oh, yeah. The dogs don't, don't like the wacky here. trend. I don't need tulips and a bust of Marie Antoinette in my fridge, bitch. I'm hungry. That's a lot. But I don't judge anyone else who wants to do it. I'm just saying. Oh, I'll judge. Yeah. Don't worry. I'll judge. It's <laughs> no. my duty. Well, no. <laughs> kind of. I'm on the internet. I can judge. Okay. That's fine. what we do here. Comment down below if you like fridge scaping. <laughs> judge and um, Megan, yeah. you've been a dream. Thank What's you your middle name, Megan? Monique. Megan Monique. Monique. Yes. MMG and MVM. Oh, and RSPM. <laughs> Eat CT. Oh my God. Oh, yes. Bye, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we got all the letters, bitch. All the letters.